I can't breathe, babe. Oh. That's what Sarah. I feel like when you chewing on me. Sarah! F you! F please, Sarah! Yeah. You should probably shut the f up. Sarah. whole suitcase thing has never happened before. Those are the words of Sarah Boone to investigators after leaving her boyfriend George Torres in that suitcase to die. But was death the intent? Prosecutors say so. Here's some more of her police interrogation video. She's confronted about her true intentions. I thought he was okay. Like I didn't. You he's telling you he's not. He's telling you, Sarah, I, I can't I, breathe. He's saying your name, and you're like, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Guys, that's how we are with each other. Like, he has... Nobody understands our relationship. This, the whole suitcase thing, never happened before. Would you leave someone else in a suitcase? Would you leave Lucas in a suitcase jokingly? Because it was a no. joking matter. You put him in there jokingly. Would you leave Lucas jokingly no. in there? And you love Lucas, right? And you I wouldn't George. do that to him, either. I wouldn't do that to him. So, I, I just... Oh. Well, it's not like, again, I don't think you all understand. Like, it's... I mean... It's not my... That was not my intention. <laughs> Y'all don't have any idea what I've done for him. But by your acts, and that's exactly right. You get to the point where you've done so much for somebody and they don't no. show you any appreciation. He did. Not by, by your words in the video. I don't get that. Mm, yeah, she's taunting him in the video and saying this is what it feels like when you cheat on me. If I'm the prosecution, my theme is going to be revenge, that this was an act of revenge because she's angry about him cheating. If you're the defense, though, are you going to say that she's a victim of domestic violence and just had enough on this very bad day? Let's bring in our guest on the program, our law enforcement analyst, David Katz, the founder and CEO of Global Security Group, served many years in federal law enforcement. Uh, David, what do you think when a defendant like Sarah Boone tells you, you know, oh, this is just a game of hide and seek. We're drinking. We're playing around. You know, nobody intended for anybody to die here. Well, I actually consulted the official rules of hide and seek. And for those of you who don't know the concept, <laughs> one person closes their eyes or covers their eyes and counts to any number, usually 100, and other players hide. So in other words, the person seeking does not know where the person is hiding. I was scouring the internet trying to find a version where the, the person seeking stuffs the person into a suitcase, knows where that person is, and then the games begin. So this whole hide and seek thing is uh, it's bizarre, and I wonder if I, what if I have to pull then I have to pull an expert saying, well, no, there is a variation with the seeker. I mean, it just it, it's just it's crazy. It's mm -hmm. crazy. It, it sure is. Uh, and David, I'm curious to know what you think happened here. I I've you know got a theory, and and this is my theory, and maybe because I think like the prosecutor that I, I once was. I think that there was some kind of a fight, and I think that there was a beating that went down, that she beat him. We know the medical examiner found the blunt force trauma to his head. We know that the medical examiner noted scratches to his back and his neck. Um, that being said, they both were drinking. I'm wondering if he was knocked out, also the intoxication might have helped, and that she forced him in there and zipped him in. Because initially, I'm like, how does somebody go in there willingly to play hide and seek, even fit in there? Uh, that's my theory. If I'm the prosecution, that's what I'm going with, that she knocked him out, stuffed him in there to leave him to die. Uh, what do you think, how plausible is that from a law enforcement perspective? I agree with you completely. I think the, the possibility that he just climbed in willingly as she zipped him closed, is, is slim to none. So the question's gonna be based on her, her relative size, his size, and there are a lot of ways you could do it, but, but a lot, as you, as you mentioned perfectly, it depends on his stature, his body weight. She's not a, she's not a particularly large woman, she's small statured herself. So the, 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 the physicality involved in getting his body into the suitcase Stuffing, rearranging him so he's fitting and then zipping him closed, that, that's going to be an issue too. 
But if he's, I mean, if he's very, he appears, at least based on the photos, he appears to be slim, lightweight, small statured, then that could explain it. The other thing is, if he's, if he's lying on the ground, either knocked out or passed out, she probably could arrange him in a situation Put the put the suitcase on top of him somehow, then and kind of roll him into it. I mean, that's mm -hmm. I was trying to I was trying to figure out how how it could possibly be done. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be a big big issue. You can count on that. Right, right. You know, and, and maybe as you're talking, David, I'm, I'm kind of picturing in my mind maybe a courtroom demonstration. These prosecutors might be smart because most people don't do this thing. Thank goodness. It might be smart to bring in that suitcase and show just how large it is, how small he was, and how somebody uh, her size could, you know, push him on in there and zip it up, as you said. Uh, this is ooh, what a bad case. I, I'm I'm just stunned that th that this happened. And, and it is so horrific. What a way to die, uh, really. Uh, and Sarah Boone, I bet she's going to have something to say when she goes to court on July 21st. Uh, let's take a listen. We have time to hear what she said to the 911 operator when she finally called. My boyfriend and I were playing last night, and mm -hmm. I put him in a case and we were playing. And okay. like kind of hide and seek kind of thing. So. I fell asleep and I woke up and he was dead in the suitcase. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. David Katz, is she putting forth a defense there to the 911 operator? Oh yeah, but I, th I think what she also did, she also made it made it impossible for her to ever take the stand in her defense. Oh, that's good. Because, I, mean, I mean, think about this. I mean, if you, you if you're a former prosecutor, mm -hmm. what would your line of questioning be? Oh, I'd spend I a day and a half on hide and seek. Oh yeah, I'd play that call back for her and grill her like a steak. Absolutely. Um, yeah, she's in trouble. She's in big, big trouble.